Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Varen and I want to talk to you today about how I do my major life goal planning and goal setting based on astrology. If you are new here, um, I am a professional astrologer and astrology has kind of invaded my life since I started learning about it. It has just taken over, which is why I love it so much, which is why I started the Let's Talk About Astrology video series. I'll link the playlist up above in the cards. Um, and I love to use astrology everywhere I can. Um, it's just super special to me. And so last year, I started figuring out how to use astrology for my goal setting, and I got super excited. And there's been a major evolution which prompted this video. So let's get into it. First, just a quick note, in case you can hear it, I am sick. Um, so I'm okay. It's a very mild sickness compared to when I had COVID in January, but I do feel kind of yucky. <laughs> Anyways, so I have here three journals. There's a fourth one in the drawer, but this was the first journal where I did um, astrology-based goals planning. This was a major evolution, and this is my current journal. I do have a playlist of astrology-based goal planning. I will link that up above in the cards as well. So the whole thing is, like I was saying, astrology has very much invaded my life and my brain. And um, quite frankly, I love it and I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Uh, so it started because goal planning is always a thing I've had trouble with. Always. I've spent a lot of time watching videos about goal planning and, and all of these things. And I saw, um, of course, many videos about things like level 10 life goal planning. And it just, none of these things quite worked for me. So if, if you're brand new here, as I mentioned, I am a professional astrologer. I have a website. It's linked down below in the description box. And I have some excited things coming up for my YouTube channel membership uh, in terms of astrology and guided practices and stuff. Stay tuned to the end of the video to hear a little bit more about that. Um, so I'm a very particular pickle in that I, I like to smush everything in my life into one glorious pile of mine. Um, my brain works in very strange ways that I don't know how to put words to, um, in that like it, it sees all these threads all at once and it wants to weave them all together. Um, and astrology has become one of those major threads. I, astrology is a language. And for me, when I learned how to start speaking astrology, the language, like I said, it invaded, it take, it took over and I started thinking about everything in terms of astrology. So there was a time around January um, 2022 where I was sitting down. I was trying to think about problem solving, getting to the point where like I want to work on goals. This is something I have been trying to do for years. And because I'm neurodivergent and because the way my brain works, there's many reasons in which it hasn't happened. And then the first piece clicked in when I thought, wait a minute. If there are so many goal setting systems built around this anchor of evaluate the areas of your life and then from there set some goals, I was like, I can do that with astrology. Because, um, so if you don't know, there's three main components in astrology, the signs, the houses, and the planets. The houses tend to be where a lot of people get confused especially when they're learning. And the learning curve to astrology is steep. I did do a video, uh, one of my Let's Talk About Astrology videos, I will link up above in the cards, where I talked about how the three pieces come together. And what the houses essentially are is they are the different areas of your life. 
they are where the planetary energy we're talking about shows up. So there are areas of your life. You have one for your career. You have one for your resources. You have one for your relationships. You have one for your community. There, there's all sorts of them. There's 12, in fact. And when I realized, oh my God, they're the areas of life, something clicked one day and I was like, I can, I can use my houses as the areas of my life for my goal planning instead of, say, using something like the level 10 life or th there's lots of them. So that was the first step, which you can see here. So it started off with me and I do have a video, uh, like a playlist of astrology based goal planning. I'll link it up above in the cards. You can check that out if you enjoy this rabbit hole. Um, I enjoy it. So here I am sharing. I was like, okay, so every month I want to I want to focus on the house or the area of my life that is associated with that month. Because the the months largely line up with the sun seasons. There's a little bit of time where it's not quite, but for example, around March 20th ish, it changes every year, but around March 20th, the sun will move into Aries. And it will stay there until around April 20th. So the last 10-ish days of a month usually is the, the beginning of a sun season. And then you have about 20-ish days, uh, as low as like 18, in a month in the next sun season. Um, in, in that one where it where it's transitioned to. So... March 20th, the sun moves into Aries. Again, this is approximately. Um, you have the last 11, 10, 11 days of, Ari of March are Aries season. And then the first 20 days of April, approximately, is Aries season. So when you use whole sign house system, which I do as well, I do have a resource video for um, getting your whole sign chart. I'll link that up above. Um, Everything lines up. Here's what my chart looks like. And it, this is a whole sign chart, so you can see how everything lines up. So if you know what sun season is associated with each month, which it's very easy to note that, you just start with Capricorn for January and go around, um, you can find that section, right? So it's like, okay, January is associated with Capricorn. Capricorn is my seventh house. The seventh house is about one-on-one -on -one relationships. It's anything involving one-on-one -on -one relationships. It's not group relationships. That's a different house. It's the one-on-one. -on -one. So my relationship with my wife, my relationship with my son, my relationship with each individual client for my work, my relationship with my friend. All of these are things that fall under the seventh house. So here in January, the first month I did this, I evaluated how I felt about all the areas of my life using the houses. And I made sure the like highlighted one was the house I'm currently in. And then I did some goal setting based on that. And this was the first where the idea sprung from. It did get some upgrades. And the first, like the major upgrade was in the beginning of this last journal for 2022. So I decided that I didn't want to reevaluate all the areas of my life every single month. I decided to do it quarterly with the seasons. And this actually works really, really well for my chart because of the fact that I have a lot of placements in the cardinal signs. And the cardinal signs are the start of the new season. I am planning to do a video, um, a let's talk about astrology video, talking about astrology and the seasons and how they like line up. Uh, de definitely let me know in the comments down below if you would in fact find that interesting. So I decided to do it by season. 
So I set up a tracker at the beginning of my book here where I evaluated it all. And then what I did moving forward from this was, gotta find it. So I evaluated them all at the start of, this would have been um, at the end of September. So I evaluated them all. And then when I started my month, I looked at the area associated with October, that's Libra, and I evaluated that one. And that's when I started doing this, where I have a main, a before, and an after. The main is always how it was here. The before is how did I feel about it, like when I started that time. And then the after is how I felt about it ending that time. So that was the next big evolution. And then I had this whole goal setting thing I was trying to do. Towards the end of the year, I think it was, it started to shift more. Let's just see if I can't find it. Oh God, this looks so good. Man, I just love how it looks when you write with a nice clean like felt tip pen, but it takes so much, like I kill them. Anyways, so there's that one. And then, My next journal was the one I actually just finished. And for this one, when I set it up, I kept with the Cosmic Life Goals. Um, and then I had boxes for like, what kind of thing I wanted to focus on. Um, and it was kind of based on some complicated things that I'm not going to bother explaining because I, it, it was, my brain was conceptualizing things and it got a bit overcomplicated. Um, but so I'd written ideas of what I want to do. Like on May, I wanted to work on focus. Uh, spirituality wise I, I wanted to work on focus on June I wanted to work on obstacle shadow work on for September I wanted it to be grounding and then I had goals I I had the goals so I was doing like this was the plan starting the year and then it, it just wasn't it wasn't quite hitting it wasn't quite working properly um, and then, of course, if you've been around, you will know I've since then drastically changed my, oh, I didn't do this. Um, I've since drastically changed how I'm working in my planner and I'm now, sorry, I'm just trying to prop my book. I'm now going following the sun season instead of the month for my setups. <laughs> if you can hear my kid, he's very excited about his applesauce. I started to determine that I wanted to include it in my predictions. So I already have my year ahead spread that I do. This is, I'm going to try and explain this the best I can, but this is a very many part process now that is just kind of weaving together into this big beautiful web of confusing awesome astrology -ness. but I pull a year ahead spread I pull it for the beginning of the calendar year and um I pull it for the beginning of the calendar year and then from that, I sit there and I, um, each month, sorry, my brain is thinking, um, each sun season, I 
look more deeply at that and predict and see what's going on. I've done a few videos where I do my predictions. It's linked up above in the cards. You can check one out. Um, so the main card in the energy for Pisces season, I had the chariot. And then I pulled, based on my astrology, I pulled some more cards and then I interpreted that. So I decided to include my evalu my monthly evaluation of the area of my life in with the predictions. And that was kind of the last evolution in here. Um, this needs to go back on my altar. And that brings us to my last evolution, um, which is here in my new journal. So I haven't actually really shown anything in this as of yet, or at least not the intro. I was planning to, but it's a lot simpler. I, I didn't reference at all. I did not reference and, and do any work in that goal planning thing. So I wanted to change it. I wanted to make it easier to draw, so I did make it smaller. And I had ended the season, because now, now my journals go by season. So this is my spring journal. Uh, the first one, the one you just were in, that was my winter journal. Um, so at the end of my winter journal, I did a shifting into spring reading. Um, so I, I did include my wheel here. I did include my wheel here and I did include my wheel here and I reevaluated everything. I put what I thought it, thought it was about and then I referenced, um, the cards I had pulled. The cards I had pulled were my, I pulled the Two of Wands, I pulled the Knight of Swords for Taurus season, then I pulled the Six of Wands for Gemini season, and then I wrote that my solar return was March 30th, that was my birthday, and starting my ninth house perfection year of spirit and study, and that, that is where I came into this next evolution of goal planning with astrology. I have my year of tarot cards, um, where I record what, what cards I pull. I'm, I'm having some trouble. I'm not going to lie with y'all. As I'm talking about this, I'm wondering if I want to change when I do my year ahead spread. Because I do my year ahead spread based on, um, like, I, I was doing my year ahead spread to follow the month initially, but I no longer follow the month. And now I've connected it to, to my, to my, um, I've connected things to my birthday and my birthday happens to be at the start of the astrological new year, um, which is the beginning of Aries. So I'm like, fuck, now do I want to change it and realign? <laughs> this is the thing with me. If you're new here, I've had some comments over time where people comment about how often I change things. Yeah, because I'm a human and human life, life in general is change. It's evolving constantly. I, and for me, it's a rapid evolution. And I know that that's hard for some people um, because no one really likes change, Um Unless it's associated with a new shiny thing of some sort. For me, the way my brain works, I can't sit and plan out everything I'm going to do and then start it. Because I can't conceptualize that way. My brain doesn't process and conceptualize the way your brain might. So where for some of you watching this, you might be able to sit down and conceptualize and plan and and look at all the pieces and then start the process of whatever the thing is. I can't do that. It just does not work like that. I don't I don't have the ability to see all the holes, all the potential holes in ways in which things might not actually work until I've started doing the thing. Um and I'm the type of person that if I don't start when I have the motivation, I will never start. So what this means is I have a lot of 
change and a lot of rapid evolution because I'll start something and I'll, over time, I'll modify it to fit me because I'll learn about me more and I'll understand more of like what I want it to be in my life, where I want it to fit. So things like my journal constantly changing, things like the way my house is set up constantly changing until I find the thing that fits. Once I find the thing that fits and hits all those boxes that I didn't know I had, then I tend to stay <laughs> and not change it. I have a process that fits for my year ahead spread. I'm not sure if it's fully aligned yet. I'm thinking no, but maybe we'll talk about that more. Anyway, um, and that brings us to here. <laughs> There's this pro there's this thing in astrology called the perfection year. And what it essentially is, it's a Hellenistic tradition, I believe. I'll put a subtitle to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, what that means is every year from your birthday, you have you begin a new annual perfection year. And essentially it it goes through your chart, all the houses of your chart. So, like, if you Google annual perfection chart, you can find images like this one right here. Um, this is the one I reference when working with clients all the time, in fact. So, as you can see, all they do is they start it, it starts at zero with your rising sign because your age actually marks the end of that year. So you turn one at the end of your first year of life. And then you turn two at the end of your second year of life. So I just turned 32 and I have begun my 33rd, the 33rd year of my life. And I will turn 33 at the end to mark that I've done it. I've, I've gone around the sun 33 times, right? So, and, and it, it starts with zero with your rising sign and then it puts the ages all around. So you look at this chart, you find your age. You look at the chart, you find your age. So I am 32. And as you can see on this picture, you follow it into the center and it says under 32, it says ninth. So then what that's saying is for when you have begun your when you are 32 to the day you turn 33, you are in a ninth house perfection year. And then the ninth house is the house of spirit and study. Um, so this is post-secondary education. It doesn't have to be like college, but it is a lot. Morals, philosophy, spirituality. This is traditionally known as the house of the God and then the third house was traditionally known as the house of the goddess, right? So this is the idea where you do like more advanced learning. You do deeper study and, and it's deeper study in things that really inform your, your worldview, your morals, your philosophy, your belief system, et cetera, et cetera. Um, these are the topics. So if you look at um, like when you turned 20 and when you turned 32, those years when you were 20 and when you were 32, those years you might naturally find a pattern that even without trying, even without knowing the astrology, you happen to be doing a lot of spiritual growth and development. I know for me at 20, there was a shit ton of spiritual stuff going on. I had just gotten together with, I had like, yeah, I was just getting together with my wife um, because we got married when I was 22. So I had like just gotten together with my wife and there was a whole bunch of stuff. It was a big like spiritual awakening kind of a thing. Um, so I was like, why aren't I using this as my time to do my goal planning? So if you're a person that you felt like goal planning with the year, the calendar years never quite made sense to you, um, looking at your annual perfection year might help you. And if you're interested in astrology, please do remember I'm a professional astrologer and my favorite thing to do with my work is to teach you about your chart, is to teach you astrology so that way you can use it to empower your life 
uh, like I have been able to, right? In, in whatever way works for you. So if you're interested in that, there's my website. You want to find the learn your chart session. Anyways, so I decided I wanted to try my hand at goal planning with my ninth house perfection year. So the idea being for this year, that that's where I'm looking at as like the start. It's my next trip around the sun. And this is kind of why I'm like, fuck, do I want to realign my year ahead spread to go with this? I might. Oh, dear God. Um, oh, dear goodness gracious. I might. Fuck. Damn it. All right. Um, every time I think I'm settled on something, I tell you, it's not just you that you all watching this that gets like that feeling of whiplash and yo-yoing back and forth. I get it too. Anywho, so I decided I wanted to get, I wanted to do something with cards for this because I love my cards and I have this fabulous new deck that I truly like. I love this deck. I did do a walkthrough video of it. I'll link it up above in the cards. And that walkthrough does no justice to it because I didn't understand the guidebook. So I didn't talk about it well. This is the Energy Archaeology Oracle. First of all, the artwork is absolutely breathtaking. Second of all, like, look at this. It's got a keyword for each one. And the keywords, even if I can't put words to explain it, the keywords, I can feel the truth of them. And it's associated with a part of the skeletal structure because the whole idea of this deck, the Energy Archaeology Oracle, is your bones are an oracle. Your bones physically and energetically are your foundation. They flow and transmit energy and frequency at a foundational level based on the deepest energetic resonance of who you are. This incredible intelligence flows through your marrow and is encoded within your very structure. These oracle cards are consciously created to help you access depth in your depths in your bones and the wisdom held there. So this is what I love about this is it's it's um it's connected to your body. So it has that grounded energy, but it's also connected to the energetic um, more esoteric spiritual flow kind of feeling this fit this card haunts me like this image is just oh my god um it's connected to this um to that so it it's this perfect melding of the two and I I feel buzzy whenever I pull this out um and the cool thing is because it is connected to the body, you can reference it. So like if you have problems with your wrists, you can look, it says the card associated pulse, you can read about pulse. And each card has the element, words for when it's in balance, words for when it's out of balance, the associate cards, a little blurb about the anatomy. It talks about the energy, which is like, so the capitate bone plays a central role in the unique pulse-like flow of the wrist as energy moves back and forth over these bones from center to center. When energies aren't in alignment, they are moved to the scapioid, an earth element storing bone, or to the lunate, a fire element transmuting bone. So you have the energy, where it talks about the energy flow. Then you have the wisdom card. Um, Frequency is flowing to you and from you at all times through the pathways of the hands and arms. You are, you're giving and receiving ideally in equal sustainable measure. Likewise, the universe is giving to and receiving from you. And then it has four questions. What is my relationship to time? Does this change with seasons and different creations? How would it feel to release control over what I know is time and timing and trust in a divine universal timing instead? <laughs> Tell me how I picked the card that was going to call me out and tell me to just fucking follow my own flow of time. Because, so I, I looked at wrist, probably subconsciously, because I do sometimes get pains in my wrist. Um, and 
like this. How would it feel to release control over what I know is time and timing and trust in a divine universal timing instead? That question, that's what I feel like I've started doing by moving away from using the calendar time and in a sense, going back to the way we did things before the calendar was even a thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's ridiculous. And very strange. Because, like, we used astrology and astronomy to create the Gregorian calendar. So people didn't used to follow a calendar. They used to follow the sky. And to me, the sky feels like the divine universal timing instead. Um, so I very much feel like I'm in this state of releasing, releasing the idea, releasing myself from the idea of time. Um, and going back to my own flow of time. So I feel like I'm supposed to listen to this. Anyways, the point is, this guidebook is amazing. And it's got four, so it's got four questions for each one. Um, and it's like this in color image. There's a quote. The quote is normally found somewhere in here. I think always. Can't confirm. Um... But it is truly fabulous. So I wanted to work with this. And this is something that I want to work with deeply. That I want to bond with. Um, I don't want to just, like, it's not something that I want to just be fly by the seat of my pants pulling a new card every week. I want to sit in this. Um... And this, to me, the energy of this, it's really quite strange because the energy of this feels perfectly balanced. It's, it's like the tiger's eye. So this, the tiger's eye crystal is this really unique thing in that if you are too grounded, it raises your energy up. And if you are too up in your head, it grounds your energy down. So tiger's eye crystal, um... It, it's actually recommended in Judy Hall's Crystal Bible that you don't wear it all the time because of this. But it, it holds you in that centered space where your energy is kind of in your center. It is flowing. It's not too grounded, but it's not too heady. And that's how this feels. This feels grounded and heady at the same time in the most perfectly balanced way. It is highly recommended. Anyways. So I wanted to work with this in a slow way. Um, and at the time when I set this up, I was like, I really don't want to redo my year ahead spread because that's already, that's already its own thing, blah, blah. I think I'm getting over that. Anyways, so I pulled a card for the year overall and I got, I can actually show it to you. Boo, boo, boo. Where'd you go? Give me a mo. I saw it. I know I saw it. There we go. I got stability. So I pulled a card for each one. And you'll notice I actually wrote the months on here. And I... <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm just laughing at myself. The point is though, not the months. Um, because I kind of think that was me just being a little silly. Anyway, so I pulled a card overall and then I pulled a card and then I pulled 12 cards. The idea of this going from my birthday to up until my next birthday, because my birthday is March 30th. My birthday is the second last day of March. Um, and that's all, that's kind of why I lined it up with the months instead of with the seasons necessarily, because my, my birthday is, I have an Aries birthday, but it's right at the end of March. Um, I'll think about that more. And then I pulled one. So for each month, I, I don't think I'm going to do it that way 
um, I think I'm going to realign it with the seasons. So let's just quickly go through and write in all of the things. There we go. All right, cool. So I did that and I set it up. And then over here, I wrote about my card. I wrote all of the, what the element, the imbalance keywords, the out of balance keywords, the associated keywords. And then I wrote about what I feel like it's about. And like I expanded on the theme of stability. And then I wrote a couple of the questions down here. I think they're directly from the stability card. Let's look. So I wrote one of the questions. Does my sense of stability depend more on flexibility or stubbornness? Where is the balance between those for me? And then I wrote for myself, what foundations of stability do I want in my spiritual practice? And I wrote about my spiritual practice because that's the ninth house. The ninth house is the house of spirit and study. And so I, and I really want to focus on spirit and study together. And it's, the thing is like, it's, it can be any kind of post-secondary education. However, it, it does tend to get tied really closely with things that impact your worldview, that impact your spiritual beliefs, the morals, the philosophy that I mentioned. So because we're talking here, I, I, I wrote here, um, you do not have any self-stability. You do and have always done... Um, you cling to others, hoping they will provide your stability. But then when they can't, your stability crumbles. Your stability needs to be built upon your sovereignty. That's my word of the year. Upon only you. Upon only you. Build it like the tree that's described in the card. Build it to sway, to bend without breaking, so it can snap back in place. You need to build your stability the same way you know to build your life. Build an adaptably stable spiritual practice. And then, like I said, I wrote down that question and then I thought of this question. And then from there, I did some goal planning. Um, so I wrote up here about my, my ninth house is Pisces. It's the ninth house of spirit and study, which means because Jupiter rules Pisces and I'm in my ninth house perfection year, um, Okay, hold on. Let me retry that again. Because I'm in my ninth house perfection year, my ninth house is Pisces. And the planet that rules Pisces is Jupiter. That means Jupiter is my time lord. Jupiter is the planet that I can work really well with this year. And frankly, I am extremely excited about it. So I wrote up at the top, Pisces, ninth house of spirit and study, Jupiter, time lord. And then I wrote about those three things. I wrote keywords for the ninth house, keywords for Pisces, keywords for Jupiter. Then I looked at my Jupiter in my chart. And, and you don't have to do this this complicated. I like doing things complicated. <laughs> That's just me. I am not very simple of a person. Um, so my Jupiter is in Leo. So I wrote keywords here for Leo. And it's in my second house. So I wrote keywords for that. And then I looked at the journey of Jupiter through this ninth house perfection year. When my ninth house perfection year started, current and currently, Jupiter is in Aries. I wrote some keywords for Aries. In my chart, Aries is my 10th house, so I wrote some keywords for that. Um, in the matter of like just over a month in May, Jupiter will enter Taurus. I wrote some keywords for Taurus, which is my 11th house. I wrote some keywords for that. And then looking at all of these keywords, I wrote my goal. And this is, and, and the thing for me, this is the other part of where I really struggle with goal planning. I am hella good. I can write you smart goals, no problem. Actually doing them never fucking happens. I'm a flowery bitch. It's just the truth, and I just need to accept 
that that's my truth. I am a flowery, flavorful, wordy bitch. I don't like doing smart goals. They're fucking bored me. They bore me. I'm bored, so I don't do them. This is why my journal, my journaling practice did not start developing until I started making it pretty because that's essential for me to do the damned thing. So I just had to accept with this process that for me, my goal planning is not going to work using SMART goals. So if you've been trying and everyone in the world is like, you have to do SMART goals, here's your permission. You don't fucking have to. If SMART goals are not working for you, there could be another way. For me, I have to be able to feel my goal. I have to be able to intrinsically and intuitively understand what it means, even if I can't put structured mundane wording to it. I'm not a very practical person. I'm just not. So my goal, I wrote in accordance with that. My goal is to build a life that is spiritual and move through it intuitively. So I want my life to feel more spiritual and I want to build it in the way that I can just move through it intuitively. A life that feels secure, dependable, and yet adventurous. I know those things are counterintuitive according to some but what can I say I'm also a contrary I'm also a contrary being so a life that feels secure dependable and yet adventurous which supports my growth as a being a stable embodied spiritual foundation so I can safely branch out if you're watching this and you've gotten this far and you're a very practical person you might read that and say what? <laughs> How do you work with that? And that's okay. If you're a fellow flowery bitch and you're listening to me talk about this, and I say bitch in the most loving way um, here. If you're a fellow flowery bitch and you're listening to me read that, maybe you also feel it because I do. And that's what I need. I need this. I understand I may not know what this looks like, but I know what it feels like. And I am, I go by my feeling. I always have, I tried to move away from it. It only caused me way more grief. I'm done. I'm going back to me and my core. And my core is very Knight of Cups in the, I follow my heart. I follow my feeling. So I need my goals to be feeling oriented, which this makes a lot of sense because I am a Cancer rising, which means the moon is my chart ruler and the moon is all about feeling and intuition. So take that for what it is. And then based on that, I came up with three goals I want to work on. These are my three goals for the year. I can change them if I get to the point where I feel like I have established the goal, where I've, I've hit the goal then I can come up with new goals. I'm going to reevaluate this when I get to my um, summer journal. So the goals I came up with, goal one, establish a daily altar practice. And then I just did some simple exploration of my goals, again, to feel them out. So I asked the big question, what is the time for my altar practice? What's the best time for my altar practice? I said the evening. And then I had... Uh, and then I wrote an idea I got. Um, simple daily chant slash affirmations for the planetary days, maybe based on the deck and card affirmation. Um, I'll talk more about that in another video if, if it feels right once it's established. However, that was an idea. The only thing that's solid is that I want to establish a daily altar practice. And for me, that's enough. If I get too prescriptive with my goal planning, I literally will not do it. And this is a part of my neurodivergent brain um, being pathological, demand avoidant, autistic profile. Um, if it starts to feel like a demand, it sends my system into freak out mode and then I can't do anything. So I, I know I want a daily altar practice and I want, I want that... Build it to sway, to bend without breaking so it can snap back in place. I've learned from journaling over the years, because I started journaling in 2016, um, truly. I've learned from journaling that 
I need something that starts out super simple and easy. So when I have the lowest energy that I love, that I enjoy, there's got to be some sort of dorky element that I enjoy, like tracking my daily tarot pulls. I do this every year. It brings me a lot of dorky joy and I love it. My absolute basic tarot daily practice is literally I just pull a card and I write it down. When I feel good, I can do other practices. But on my bad days, I can say fuck it to the extra shit and just stick with the simple. I can snap back to that basic. I understand that about myself. So I'm doing this the same way. I want to build a date. I establish a daily altar practice, a very basic one. I also want to establish a daily reading practice. And then I wrote my idea. I th I'm thinking part of my evening routine after my journal and my altar time. I'd really love to have cuddle and reading time with my wife. That's something I would really love to do. And then goal three is establish a general life structure. This one was harder and I have more written. I have things I want to just establish. I want to have set work days, set days off, set cleaning days, set food days. There's a lot I need to work on in the general life structure because up until this point, I never really understood my brain. Um, I just understood that it didn't work according to society standards. And so now that I do understand my brain, I'm ready to fix things. And then I wrote a bunch of one-off tasks, things I want to do that I feel like will be growing and moving me in the directions I want to go. A lot of them are reading. <laughs> a lot of them are reading based. And then those will just get checked off. And then here's where I'm thinking now having written or having talked a bunch about this. Because I tried to sit down and write about my annual perfection for April. And I just wasn't feeling it. And again, I think that's because, I think that's because it's, I put it back with the months. I put it back with this time structure that I don't really like. But I was trying to do this. So what I'm thinking now, I, I'm very excited about this. And this is something that it works. I can't, I'm actively working. I've been, I, I've been doing a daily altar practice almost every single day for like over a week, going on two weeks. Um, actually, in fact, um, and like, if you want to see what my altar looks like, I did do a, a new office room tour. It's linked up above in the cards. Um, the reading practice, I haven't gotten there yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it out. I feel like I want to do this goal first and then do this goal. And then this one I'm actively working on with some other stuff in my journal, like, like this. Um, this is a, a thing I'm doing, trying to figure out how to, how to do more block planning because my brain doesn't work according to anything that society says this is the way your brain should work. So I have to figure it out for myself, which is really hard and really tiring and which is why at 32 years old, I'm just now starting to try and figure it out. Well, not starting to try. I'm starting to be able to figure it out because I understand my brain better. So I'm, I'm putting everything on this now understanding that I have that I have to keep things general and simple, but so I have that stability, so I have that structure, but so that way the structure isn't so overwhelming that I throw myself into executive dysfunction. So like, I need to establish a cleaning day. Every time I've tried to establish cleaning routines, and I've tried. Oh my gosh, have I tried. Every single time I've tried, it doesn't work. Because I'm putting too many, I'm putting it on my plate in a way that overwhelms my brain. And when your brain is overwhelmed, you can't think clearly to actually do the thing you need to do. Um, right? Like, essentially, 
everyone's just looking for the way to understand things in a way that doesn't overwhelm them. Because when we feel overwhelmed, no matter what way our brain works, when we feel overwhelmed, we can't do the things that we want and need to do, right? This is why anyone can end up in burnout, regardless of if they're neurodivergent or not. Um, so for some of us, the way to to do it so it's not overwhelming is to plan in very prescriptive, specific, smart goal kinds of ways. And that's fabulous. That's not the truth for me. What is the truth for me is I need a, a general, a general, here's my day. I know that this is the plan, the, all the specifics of it, that gets left open. So that way I can work with where I am currently. So if I want to establish a cleaning day, I tried. I tried doing the schedule where it was like, Monday I'm going to clean the bathroom. Thursday I'm going to mop. This shit doesn't work. Nope, it does not work. Um, but I want to establish a cleaning day. I want to establish a cleaning day that's nice and open where I say, and I know to myself, this is my day where I'm going to be focusing on cleaning. If I wake up that day and I feel terrible, I don't have a huge list of the things I, I need to clean. I'm saying, okay, my focus is cleaning. What can I accomplish today? It's it, it puts me back in the space of, okay, here's where I'm at in this moment today. What can I do? Instead of me living in the space, fuck, I can't do all of this. So what am I going to do? Right? It's reframing and putting me in the position where I'm in the fucking driver's seat. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be everything. Um, it's just, here's the day that I need to do cleaning. Here's the day that I want to focus on cleaning. This is the day I've put aside to do cleaning stuff. This morning I feel like this. Okay, so I'm going to look around my house and based on how I'm feeling, what's the stuff that I really want to get done? Not the shit that I have to get done. Now we are establishing some specific cleaning routines. But again, there it it's so hard to explain because life is tricky and it's not cut and dry and black and white and that easy for everyone. My brain is not easy. Um, and I'm not saying anyone's brain is easy because I'm sure no one feels like that. However, there are some people who would look, who would listen to me and say, well, cleaning days are easy. You just do one task each day. That is never going to be how it works for me. And that's okay. So, um, so I am working on these. If you'd like to hear me talk more about this kind of stuff, specifically how I'm learning to structure my neurodivergent life, how I'm, how I'm learning to plan, how I'm working on planning with like this. So here, like I have to work every week, um, but I'm, I'm working on general ideas of what type of work I'm focused on. Um, so if you'd like to hear me talk more about that kind of stuff, do let me know in the comments down below. And then what I'm thinking moving forward is I am going to meld the two because I have this stunning deck. And when I tried to interpret this, I wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't kind of, kind of didn't really go anywhere. Oh, that does look really good. Um, so... I'm not going to, oh, this is fucking beautiful. <laughs> They're so goddamn pretty. Yeah. Okay. It's so funny because I specifically, like, a part of my brain was like, okay, do I want to integrate this into my, your head spread practice that I do? And it's like, no, 
because that's solid and I was afraid to shake it up. But it's solid. I should trust my foundation. Oh my God, look at this. Supporting this foot, stepping away with the Eight of Cups and the Four of Cups. Oh my gosh. Okay. I am going to... I am going to do this. So, <laughs> fucking... This too, look. Pleasure, Nine of Cups, Knight of Wands. And this is one of my favorite Knight of Wands pictures ever. Look at this pairing. Forgiveness... Ooh. Oh, okay. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting this. But I'm excited now. So. Like, they're not a perfect match, but they, it feels really good. So, I'm going to work on integrating that. So, I guess, um, there's going to be some shifting and and changing. It's a little weird because I've already like, I'm already into Aries season and it's not going to be a perfect lineup because my birthday's, my birthday is the end of March. Um, but I'm really excited now to integrate the two. So and seriously, it, if you are one of the people who's watching this, who's like, fuck, every time she seems settled on something, she changes something else. Yeah, I know. It's fucking annoying for me, too. You are not the only one who finds it annoying. I promise you. I wonder if I can build, not this, but I wonder if I can build... Oh, I might need to make a new spread. Not to get rid of these spreads. This one I love, but I'm... Anyways, I'm I'm now in a different thinking rabbit hole. So I'm going to let you go here. Uh, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up to let me know if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell notification so you can come on back nice and easily. As I mentioned, I am a professional astrologer and I do love to teach astrology. I also love to work with tarot with my astrology. So like I build spreads on astrology and then use tarot to interpret said spreads. It's fabulous. It's a lot of what I do. You can check out some more about that. Um, I'll put my let's talk about your head spreads video on the end screen. So you can check that out. And Otherwise, you can check out my website. It's linked in the description box. If you have any trouble navigating my website or get at all confused because words and communication can be really hard for me, um, conveying, like getting my ma my message to accurately convey what I want it to convey, I have trouble with that. So uh, let me know. There's my email. You can email me. It's there in the description box if you have any questions. And as promised... Also in the description box is my YouTube channel membership, which I promised I would tell you some details, is getting an upgrade. So, part of this whole I'm an evolving creature who changes things, the YouTube channel membership is changing. I needed to start it from where it was and what felt right at the time, and I've been doing it for, let's see, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. I've been doing it for... September, October, November, December, January, February, March. I've been doing it for seven months. I was making sure I had this thumb up and I was like, was it seven or eight? Um, and I, I wanted it to change and to evolve. And I set it up in a way that, that was causing more obstacles, preventing me from delivering my best quality work. And one of the things that happened is the Patreon that I had opened, had, past tense, important part, um, it developed very quickly into a guided practice. And the guided practice follows the astrology and follows the sun sign, um, so or the sun season. So I did the first one for Aries season. It is a beautiful guided practice. So I gathered all the astrology information that was in the spicy sky weather newsletter, just like talking about the sky weather for that season. And I created prompts for each one. 
and created this really beautiful journey. Aries season was and is about sparking your fire. Taurus season, I'm going to start working on actually this week. That's, that's the thing I'm working on this week is getting that done. So what I ended up deciding to do with the help of my beautiful members, we figured it out. Um, I am keeping or I am integrating the top three tiers, the witchy plant, the, the witchy wonders, the planner peeps, those and the Patreon are getting dissolved into the Astro Allies tier, which is getting renamed um, and is going to have the guided practice and some up, updated perks very much based on the same thing. I am keeping my monthly like learn astrology with me um, thing. That is one of the perks that is definitely staying. I'm so very excited about this change. So if you are curious about this change, make sure to stay tuned. I'm going to film a video later this week talking about it more. Um, and that's going to come out so you can watch it and, and get more details. Or you can check out um, the YouTube, like keep your eyes posted on the YouTube membership. April 13th at 10 a.m. Eastern time is when the change is going to officially happen. I'm going to get it all set up so it's all ready to be published. Um, I just have to, I, I, it's just going to officially happen then. If you want to join my channel membership ahead of time so you're all ready, um, join the Astro Allies tier and you'll be safe to go. And that is it. I'm going to let you go here. Thank you so much for watching. I know this was a longer video, but I had a lot of fun chatting with you all and I hope you had fun too. And I hope to chat with you in the comments and I'm going to let you go and I will see you again very soon. Lots of love. Bye.